Hi, Gemini, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your Mars trying Pluto, September 6, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever that feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. How will Gemini be affected by M Mars, Prime Pluto? September 6, 2021. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels. <coughs> Excuse me. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart. Our emotional self, the right hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the Empress, so we're definitely creating something and bringing something forward within the world, which is with Mars trying Pluto, this is the perfect time for this creative energy to come forward. Then we have the Goddess of Water. Both of these signify pregnancy, child, you know, birthing something, creating something. So this can be something that is just an effort of love from us you know, to the world, whether it be the birth of a child, whether it be the children that we have, whether it be, you know, just this nurturing energy that we're bringing forward or this way that we are creating and cultivating our lives. It's very powerful. We then have the four of wands, which is home and family success and celebration. This is the minor kind of marriage card. So for those of you looking to have like a family, this looks really, really good. But also with Mars trying Pluto, this is a time of taking kind of like the bull by the horns and going after what we want. This is a time of strong willed and determination and, you know, this sense of I am moving myself towards success. And that's what we're doing here. We're opening up the doors towards success and we get justice. This is Libra energy. So if we have Libra within our natal chart, it's coming through very powerfully in the public arena, just as if we have water sign energy in our natal chart, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer, this is coming through very powerfully, or we're born on the cusp with Cancer, this is coming through very powerfully in our inner selves. So to be aware of this, that there is something powerful that we ourselves are creating is is a game changer. It is a game changer. And it's saying here, we're married to it. Now, it doesn't mean that we have to be married or ever want to be married. What it means is that this is something that I have a sacred oath with, that has come with me as, as part of my being myself to move me forward in my evolutionary process of my life and this is something i have to celebrate and that's what we have to say to ourselves this is something i have to celebrate because with mars trying pluto on september 6 again this is determination and focus and you know success and this is 
an intense time for us to open up the door. Now with Mars trine tri Pluto, Mars is going to act on Pluto's evolutionary, evolutionary drive, like Pluto's sense of saying, this is how we have to heal the world. You know, the evolutionary drive for healing, for transformation, for rebuilding. And to say, this is the beauty, this is the power, this is the complexity of life and existence. This is what I'm creating. And I do see you here, Gemini, much more attuned with Pluto than with more Mars, even though we want to be the warrior, even we want to be that fierceness, but there's the sense of the healing means everything. The growth means everything. The transformation means everything. And without that, we're actually going to feel a bit hollow, a bit less than. So it doesn't matter your, your gender, how you identify yourself. It doesn't matter how you're creating or birthing something forward within the world, just as long as you have your mind open to this powerful creative energy, this powerful intuitive energy that is coming your way. Because there is this sense around us here with Mars trying Pluto that we can tap into our intuitive psychic self. We can type in, tap into this intuitive aspect of us that we might have been ignoring for just way too long. And this is a time to easily express our desires and our passions, our wants, and what we're working towards to transform within our lives. How we're working to transform these energies of desires, passions, wants into a higher energy vibration of where we stand, who we are, and what we want from our life. This is also going to bring about great change. And this is going to bring us into focus for us. And it helps us realize our purpose. So this is a time where instead of looking outward at everybody else, it's like, oh, I see me. Oh, hello. You know, it's like, oh, hello there, wonderful Gemini. I see me. I'm embracing me. I get me. And this brings us then to embracing this aura that is around us and it is around everybody during this time, but everybody will embrace it a bit differently. But this aura of sensuality and sexuality and power and passion and saying, yeah, I accept it. I accept this beautiful aspect of myself. I don't want to hide away from it. I don't want to use it as kind of a shield from the rest of the world. I step into the power that is me. So let's look at the energy we have to be mindful of during this time. What is the energy that Gemini needs to be mindful of? Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. And this is the Hierophant. Now this could be Taurus energy if we're born on the cusp with Taurus or have Taurus within our natal chart. This kind of, <coughs> excuse me, this aspect of it has to be logical, okay? It has to be grounded, it has to be rooted, it has to be fact-checked, you know, here to the Mississippi. You know, that's, that's going to be something where we have to step back and say, why? Why can't I go with my intuition and my instinct? Why can't I embrace what I want and what I need and who I am? Why can't I see me openly and honestly? And we're also going to be very drawn to people who just seem to be so terribly practical. And that's something that we need to work on and improve within ourselves, but yet, there needs to be this level of freedom of creation. It's kind of like a bumblebee, you know, that bee or even a wasp, you know, they need to go and collect pollen from different flowers. They just need do. They need to connect, collect enough to create, you know, the food and to live and to sustain themselves and to also keep the plants alive and everything like that. And yet if they only go to the same flower every single day, that's going to get dried up. That's not going to supply them with the nu nutrients and the nourishment that they need. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> Let me take a sip of water. I do apologize. And so here, we have to see that with ourselves, with the energy that we're being drawn to, but also with people. It's like if you keep on going back to the same exact thing without shaking it up, it doesn't mean that you have to change your plans. Like you could still want to be a great whatever, but doing things differently, embracing things differently, seeing and working with the way that your mind works. And it might not be neurotypically and being able to say, I'm breaking down these barriers. I'm stepping into myself. That's, that's powerful. It moves us then to our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. Abundance, the root chakra. The root chakra here is abundant success and prosperity. It is the sense of I am stepping into my power at the root of myself. I was made to be abundant. I was made to shine. I was made to embrace and, and glorify, you know, my prosperity. Not to say not to worship prosperity, but to say that there is glory within being prosperous within my life, within my soul, within myself. 
and I embrace the root chakra of me for this. And that's what leads us to the Empress. The Empress is claiming a voice we didn't even know we lost, claiming a throne we didn't even know we had. You know, claiming beauty and power where it's like, oh wow, this is mine? It's kind of like getting an inheritance that you never knew about. And you're like, oh seriously? Or thinking that, you know, that crazy, you know, relative didn't have any money and then all of a sudden they left you like a fortune. This is that. This is like, oh my gosh, like seriously, this is mine? I get to sit on this throne. I get to embrace this power. I get to bring forward this into the world. And again, it doesn't mean that we have to birth forward a child. What it means is that we take our creative energy and we say, it's time for you to be seen. It's time for you to be heard. It's time for you to embrace beauty and power and prosperity and success and not to hide away because you've done enough hiding. It's been long enough, Gemini. And this is the fierceness of this time. It's like embrace your fierceness, embrace your determination. That's what the Empress does. And it moves us to the goddess of water. It moves us to this time where we start to create and we start to realize that as we create, it's not just our energy that goes into this. When I was very young, okay, I wanted to be, no, I wanted to be a great writer. And I thought if I just stayed alone, didn't read anything, didn't do anything like that, I would be able to just embrace the muses and let the words come forward. <laughs> it didn't work that way. You know, it didn't work that way at all. And, you know, still to this day, I'm wondering, do I, do, do I go back? Do I embrace, you know, how do I do this? And that's what I'm seeing here and why Spirit had me share that, which wasn't something I was expecting to share at all because that was just going to be mine until either it was birthed out or it wasn't. But that is what Spirit is saying. It's like, it's time to share our creativity, our ideas, our passions, our desires. It's time to embrace our world and say there is more here to me than meets the eye. And as we do so, it's saying that we're not here alone. It's just that the muses inspire us. During this time with Mars trying Pluto, it's like, it is time to be fiercely determined and to say, I need all this energy around me. I need to connect with the wind and the stars and, and the sea and the animals and, you know, everything, everything that we don't think we need to connect to at all. It's like, no, but this is powerful and this is me. And as we do this, you know, it moves us to this place of the four of wands, to this place of celebration, success, bounty, you know, to this place of power. And it's like, I can do this. And what Spirit is having me say now, it's like, okay, you think you can be, well, take me for example, and what I just shared with wanting to be a great writer. Well, how can a little blind, deaf, you know, child that then gets that dealt with and is just so dyslexic, it's not even funny, gets to celebrate that dream. And it doesn't matter how absurd your dream is. It matters the way that you move forward within it. The way that you embrace your stories and your your essence and your being and your truth and, and your words and your power. Because it doesn't matter what your dream is and it doesn't matter your age and it doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. It matters you stepping into it and saying this is an intrinsic part of myself. This is the me I get to celebrate. This is me breaking down those barriers and stepping into my world and myself. My desires, my wants, my needs and who I am. And as we do this, it's like, oh, I see. I see why that dream was put in me. I see why that fire was here. I see what I need to celebrate and dance and embrace and just be. Because if we don't see this in Mars trying Pluto, where we have the beautiful healing energy of Pluto, where we have the fierceness of Mars, when will we have the courage to see it again? To embrace it, to see ourselves, to honor ourselves. And it moves us to justice. Now is the time to be just, not to everybody else. Lord knows, you know, Gemini, we want everybody to love us. And we want everybody just, you know, just to love us. Like that, that's just it. And it's exhausting. It is absolutely exhausting to bend over backwards for everybody else. And yet not feel as if anybody even sees you or understands you because you're too flighty, because you're too, you know, curious about everything, but stay with nothing. It's like, no, it's because I know when to leave. And I gather the information that I need and I move forward with what I need and what I desire and who I am. The justice here is saying, be just to yourself. Be discerning with the energy that you let in. Be discerning with the people that you let in. Be discerning with how you're embracing your vibrational energy and the vibrational energy of those around you. Be discerning. Embrace your power. Embrace your ideas. 
and let the justice come for why you are on this earth, for what you desire from yourself, and how you're moving yourself forward. It becomes everything, Gemini, during this time. It does, and it's one day, but it's one day that we springboard off of. It's one day that we, you know, embrace so much more from. And it brings us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of, and that's the Prince of Pentacles. I actually, like, the first thing I saw when picking this up was that he's hiding his face behind his shield. It's like I am taking my wealth and my power and I'm letting what I've accomplished hide hide me because I am what I have accomplished. I'm not, I am not who I truly am. It's kind of like how we introduce ourselves to people. We say what we do. We say how successful we are. We make sure somebody sees like the fancy car that we drive, you know, all that stuff. And that's great, but it's stuff and it's not who we are. Who we are is the essence of our soul and ourselves. Who we are is the passion and the power of our being. And so the Knight of Pentacles comes. And what we have to be mindful of is letting the stuff shield us and being very drawn to people who have a lot of stuff, have a lot of maybe fancy words to say, have a lot of, you know, ways that things should be done, but they don't have any follow through. Be mindful. Be very, very mindful of that. Or they don't have any essence behind them. They, they are too afraid to let themselves come forward. It moves us to our subconscious chakra message. And that's personal power. It's the solar plexus chakra. And that makes total sense for this time to embrace our, our power, our passion, our desire, our purpose to say, but this is me and I'm not going to be held back. I'm not going to be denied. I'm not going to be silenced. This is me. And as we embrace our personal power and as we start to say, I'm not an imposter. You know, I'm not a fraud. I'm not a bluster, a bluff or an empty show. I am who I was born to be. And though who I am born to be is something that we figure out as the years go on, as we exist, as we become, it emboldens us. It, it, it calls us forward to say, but this is important. We are important. It moves us to our subconscious rooted chakra energy. And that's the magician as above, so below, as we believe it. So it becomes our rooted energy is saying that what we are creating, what we are cultivating as we stand before the altar of our existence has everything to do with our mind, everything to do with the way that we're cultivating the energy within us. As we call forward our power, as we see ourselves with openness and honesty, as we move forward in ferocity and tenacity, to say, this is what I want from life, this is what I need, and this is who I am. No longer do we hide away. This isn't a time for hiding. It moves us to our subconscious in ourself, and it's the seven of air. The seven of air is to let the wind take us as it may. No more lies, no more deceits, no more fears, but to say what comes, comes, and I embrace it. And I will see the way the wind moves me forward, how it sways me and, and sculpts me and guides me and where it has me pointing at the end. It moves us to our subconscious. Emotional energy. And that's the Eight of Pentacles. Hard work pays off. Hard work pays off. And what we have been cultivating and sculpting and thinking of and, and, and molding within our lives, within our hearts, it has a place within our world. And we are good enough. Not patronizingly, but in a way that says that what we have to offer to the table doesn't constantly need to be improved and improved and improved. We are enough. And in that power of being enough, we are extraordinary. It brings us then, and also master craftsmen, like highly, highly skilled individuals that we don't see because we're too much in the muck and the mire of it. It moves us to our subconscious public arena energy. And that's the five of cups. Change your mind and change your life. As we change what we are seeing, we change the power, the beauty, and the brilliance that guides us forward. And as we look at the two of cups that still stands, the healing, beautiful love that is a part of us, we know that there is, there's a reason why we're here. We know that there is an insight and a purpose to everything and a healing to everything. It's not just about the sorrow and the, and the lost time. All right, Gemini. I hope this reading has resonated with you. 
I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the celebration of our creation. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Gemini.